Well, I think that Tiger Woods is a lost soul. I mean, he made a, a, an error here. Uh, thank God nobody got hurt. Uh, well, since that's the case, okay, he was out drinking a little bit, shouldn't get behind the wheel of a car. That's a lesson that we all need to make sure that we disseminate to the masses. Don't drink and drive. Very, very simple. But as it pertains to Tiger Woods, it goes, a far, it goes far deeper than that. I hearken back to, you know, 2008, 2009, whenever that incident occurred outside of his home in Windermere. Uh, the last time he won a major was in 2008. The last time he won a PGA Tour event was in 2013. But what really resonates and is really vexing and should be vexing to us all was how the guy was essentially living the life of a complete phony and got exposed. I'm not saying that to denigrate him in any way. I'm speaking about facts. You went about the business of making yourself into a billionaire because you marketed yourself as the wholesome family guy, you know, with the beautiful wife, the beautiful home, the beautiful game itself, and the beautiful image. It was meticulously and carefully crafted to manipulate the masses. And when he got caught out there, listen, it's none of our business what happened in his personal life between him and his wife or anything like that. He's the exception because he made it our business by selling us something that was the complete antithesis of how he was living. And when he got busted, it's hard to look at the world and know that everyone sees you for the phony that you are. So he's been about the reclamation project of rebuilding his image so he can walk into a room every day, shake hands with folks, have interviews that weren't too probing, you know, people not minding him being at the dinner table with them or anything like that. Contemporaries in the sport of golf still respecting him and rooting for him. That appeared to be more of an incentive and a part of his agenda than actually go out, going out there and winning. And so what you having and what you're witnessing right now before your very eyes is not just an individual that has fallen from grace. It's an individual that finds it very difficult to look himself in the mirror because he knows that he got busted by the entire world for being the liar and the phony that he was at that particular moment in time. And until he gets it out of his mind to get beyond that, until he gets back to the point where he could give two cents about what anybody thinks or what anybody says and just goes about the business of getting himself healthy, he is going to be an absolute mess. The short game is gone. All you know, his health is gone. His credentials, his resume, mean close to nothing at this particular moment in time because all anybody is focused on is the, the, is the, the collapse from such greatness to utter disgrace. And that's what this comes down to. Those are the demons that he's following. Everything that happens to him is indicative of that. Two things. One, Stephen A., to your point, um, the kind of uh, the difference between the image on the one hand and who he really is on the other. I understand people who would say, look, this is golf. If you want to make all that money, you're going to have to project a wholesome image. It's a kind of an easier way to the money and sponsorship than anything else. And I know boxing is very different, but I would point out that I agree with you. You got to market who you really are. That authenticity is important and it will ultimately even benefit you in terms of it will come back to benefit even your business. I know boxing is very different, but top rank, the promoter, Bob Aaron, tried to market Floyd Mayweather early in his career as the next Sugar Ray Leonard, pretty boy Floyd, and that really wasn't who Floyd was. And so he didn't really resonate to the extent that he did when he got control over his own image and said, look, this is who I really am. Um, and, uh, and, and that resonated much better. He turned into a superstar. Tiger Woods should be honest about who he is or more honest, and that would probably help him. So I agree with that. He's a mess as a result of kind of living that lie and other things, I'm sure. But I want to say something about the drunk driving of it all. You know, I, I'm, I, I understand, look, he's a guy, a rich guy, he had affairs, and he gotten, now he's gotten behind the wheel of a car, and he was inebriated, and that's happened to a lot of folks. And so you say, well, why paint him as a villain? And, and I'm largely uh, sympathetic to the point that when people are drunk, it affects their judgment. And so, yes, they get behind the wheel of a car at that point because they have bad judgment. Their judgment's impaired. It's one of the effects of alcohol. But it is such a serious thing 
that it should not just be brushed off. Well, he was over the legal limit. You know, that's hap who hasn't that happened to? I'm reminded of the incident in Times Square a couple weeks ago um, where the motorist plowed into a bunch of people, and the first reaction from everyone was, is this a terrorist attack? And it turned out it was only a drunk driver, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. In fact, drunk drivers kill and maim many more people every year, certainly in this country, than, than, than do terrorists. And so that's how serious an issue it is. And if someone is caught drinking and driving, there should be a severe penalty to that. Stephen A., we both have children. We're both on the road with them in the car at times. And drunk, drink, you know, drinking and driving, that's a menace. And, um, and I don't take that lightly. I think that's a serious infraction mm -hmm. and a terrible lapse in judgment from Tiger Woods. Totally agree with you. Totally understand that. No question about it. But again, when we're looking at this and what do you make of it, what you just said about Tiger Woods is applicable to anybody that is inebriated and gets behind the wheel of a car. Male, female, young, old, black, white, Latino, Asian, Native, it doesn't matter. It's applicable to anybody who's inebriated that gets behind the wheel of a car. 